Father's love, everyone, and welcome. We're going to continue our reading in the Gospel of John with John chapter 10. So, as always, sit back and relax. Let's see what the Spirit can teach us. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And we putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There was a division therefore again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil, and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple, in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said ye are gods? 
If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified, and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe me not, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their land, and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him, and said John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. All right, let's do a little review as always. And don't forget this chapter picks up after chapter 9, where Jesus had healed the blind man from birth, and the Pharisees were not happy about it. So he's still basically talking to the same crowd of people um, at the end of chapter 9 as he is here in chapter 10. And he starts out in chapter 10 by telling them a parable about how the shepherd comes through the door of the sheepfold, but thieves and robbers sneak into the sheepfold some other way. He says the porter opens the door for the shepherd and the sheep hear his voice and he calls them and they come out and he leads them out and he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice and he says they won't follow the voice of a stranger they'll flee from that because they know the voice they know not the voice of the strangers but they know his voice so Jesus is basically speaking a parable to them in a language they'll understand because a lot of them were shepherds and of course sheep do know the shepherd's voice and they follow it. But it says they didn't quite understand what he was talking about. So he tells them another parable. And he says, look, I'm the door of the sheep. Anyone else that ever came before me, all that ever came before me, are thieves and robbers. But the sheep didn't hear him. Now that's quite a bold statement. If you catch what he's saying here. He said, I'm the door. Anyone else that ever came, ever, are thieves and robbers. And that's why the sheep don't hear them. He says, I'm the door. If any man comes in by me, he'll be saved. And he'll go in and out and find pasture. He says, the thief comes for nothing but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So again, very interesting things Jesus is saying here to these Pharisees and the crowd that's gathered. He says, he's the door. He's the only way to be saved. He's the only way to find pasture or rest. Period. Anyone else that ever came before him were thieves and robbers. And they only came for one thing. Stewing, killing, and destroying. Period. That's it. They don't lead to life. They don't lead to the Father. They've just been lying. So they could steal, kill, and destroy. But he says, I'm the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And then he says, But someone that's a hireling, and not the shepherd, who don't own the sheep, well, if they see a wolf coming, they'll leave, they'll run. And the wolf will catch the sheep and scatter them. And they say, he says, they'll leave because they're a hireling. They don't care for the sheep. So he's trying to explain, look, only the owner cares for the sheep. Only the owner is going to stand down the wolf that's trying to attack the sheep. He won't leave. He won't flee. He'll stand it down. Anyone else but the owner, even if they were hired to do the job, 
run because they don't really care for the sheep. It's just a job to them. The owner cares for the sheep. In fact, he's willing to die for the sheep. He says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and they know me, basically. So again, he's reiterating, oh, my sheep will know my voice. They'll know it. They'll hear it and they'll follow it. And the voice of the thief or the enemy, they'll run away from. And then he says, just like the father knows me, even so I know the father and I'll lay down my life for the sheep. And again, we got to remember he's talking in parables that they should understand because a lot of them are shepherds. So he's telling them, look, I'm the good shepherd and I know who my sheep are and they know who I am. The father knows me. I know the father and I will die for these sheep. And then he says, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they'll hear my voice, and there'll be one fold and one shepherd. Now this is an interesting verse, and it's been interpreted many ways. But we got to remember he's talking to mainly the Pharisees, the religious leaders, the Jewish people. So I think he's talking about everybody else. What they call the Gentiles or the non-Jewish people, the non-Israelites, um, the non-Hebrews. Sheep that's not of this fold. They're not Hebrews. I'm also going to bring them and they're going to hear me. And it's going to be one giant fold. There ain't going to be no more denominations, no more separations, no more nothing. One fold, one shepherd, period. Nothing else matters. Your blood don't matter. Your... Nothing matters. Your ethnicity, your sex, male or female, nothing matters. One, one fold, one shepherd. He says, that's why my father loves me, because I'll lay down my life so I can take it up again. He says, no man takes it from me. I lay it down myself, because I got the power to lay it down, and I got the power to take it up again. I know this because my father told me this commandment I received from my father. He's saying, and that's why my father loves me, because he knew I was going to come and do what I need to do. I will lay down my life for these sheep, for this one fold, and I will take it up again. But it ain't because any man took it from me. I do this willingly. And because I do it willingly, I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. I know this because the father told me so. And again, of course, there was a great division among the Jews. And many of them said he got a devil. Why even listening to him? And others said, these ain't the words of him that has a devil. And can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Because remember, he just healed a dude, gave him his sight, who was blind from birth. It had never been done before. So they're arguing amongst themselves as usual. Half are saying he's possessed. Half are saying he can't be possessed. He's doing too many miracles. Too many good things. So they came to him again. Got about him. He was walking on Solomon's porch, it says. And the Jews came, circled around him again, and said to him, How, you, how long are you going to make us wonder about this? Just tell us straight out. Are you Christ or aren't you? Just tell us. Quit beating around the bush. Quit talking in parables. Just tell us straight out who you are, whether or not you're Christ. So Jesus tells them, I told you, and you don't believe me. 
all these things you see me doing, all these works that I do in my Father's name should be proof. But you still don't believe because you ain't my sheep. Just like I told you, you're not my sheep. Like you told him in the last chapter, your father is not my father. You aren't my sheep. Because my sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. In other words, the people I'm talking to, the people that are my sheep, the ones that will be saved, the ones that will be mine, already know. They understand what I'm saying. And I know them and they follow me. They do what I'm saying. They believe me. They understand. They obey. So I'll give them eternal life. And they're never going to perish. And no man will ever pluck them out of my hand. Because the Father that gave them to me is greater than everything else. There ain't nothing greater than the Father. And no man's able to pluck him out of Father's hand. And I and my Father are one. So they say, look, just tell us straight out. Are you Christ? So he tells them, look, I already told you. You don't believe me. I've showed you all kinds of miracles. You still don't believe me. Because you ain't my sheep. You're never going to believe me. You're, you're too blind. Just like it said in the last chapter. You're, you're spiritually blind. And you won't see. He says, but the ones that do hear my voice. My sheep. The ones that know me. And follow me. A lot of people like to skip over that part. It ain't just knowing and believing. You've got to follow. You've got to obey what Jesus told us to do. You can't know him. And not know what he taught us to do. You've got to follow him. And them he's going to give eternal life to. And you'll never perish. Nothing will be able to steal you from him. As long as you're following him. And doing what you're told to do. As long as you're yoked to him. And he says, my father, which is greater than everything. No one will be able to take him from him, from his hand. And then he tells him straight out, I and my father are one. Boom. We are one. So immediately, of course, the Jews pick up their stones to stone him again. And he's like, now wait a minute. I've done many good things, showed you many miracles from my father. Which one of those are you going to stone me for? And they said, well, we're not going to stone you for any of the good works you did, but for blasphemy. Because you, a man, just said that you were God. You said I and my father are one. You said you were God. That's blasphemy. That's why we're going to stone you. So Jesus says, well, wait a minute. Isn't it written in your law that I said ye are God's? So if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So in other words, now wait. Don't it say in your law? And once again, I want to stress how Jesus never calls their laws, the Father's law, or his laws. He always says Moses' law, or your law. Something to think about. And once again, right here, isn't, isn't it written in your law? That law that you're trying to follow, that religion you're teaching, don't it say right in there that you're gods? So if he, he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, under, in other words, your law, you think's the word of God, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture can't be broken, you say you can't break your law, then how are you going to say of the one that the Father sanctified and sent into the world, that I blasphemed because I said I'm the son of God. So he's once again pointing them right back to their own law. And we'll say look your law says you're God's. So how am I blaspheming because I said I'm the son of God. He said look if I don't do the works of my father don't believe me. But if I do even though you don't believe me 
at least believe the works. That way you'll know and believe that the Father is in me and I am in him. So once again, he's saying, look, if I don't, if these things I'm doing, all these miracles, aren't the works of my Father, then don't believe me. But if I do and you don't believe me, at least believe what I'm doing. It's obvious this is from the Father. I'm healing. I'm doing good things. That way you'll know and believe that the Father is in me and I'm in Him once again. Making Himself equal with what they consider God. Father. So once again, they take up their stones, try to take him, but he escapes, goes back to where John was baptizing, and abode there a while. And it said a lot of people came to him and said all the things that John spoke of this man are true. And many believed on him there. So, a lot of interesting things to think about again, brothers and sisters. Jesus and the Father are one, and he wants nothing more than us to be one with him and the Father. When you get to know Jesus and truly follow him and hear his voice, which is the Holy Spirit that he puts in us, we know his voice. Well, then it's real easy to distinguish the voice of the enemy. No matter how many times the enemy tries to trick us with a different type of voice, once you know the voice of the shepherd, well, it don't matter what other voice tries to come around. You know it's the enemy. And the only way you can do that is to get to know his voice, his attributes, his actions, his way of thinking and talking and what he told us to do. So as always, I hope this blesses each and every one of you who listen to it. Don't forget to pray for the children and our fellow brothers and sisters all around the world. And pray for those still following that wrong voice, not recognizing the voice of the shepherd that they too can come to hear his voice know his voice and follow his voice may the father bless you and keep you may he be gracious unto you and give you peace I'll see you next time